Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and this is part two looking at the new Unity timeline component as well as Playmaker. Now in this tutorial we're actually going to be just looking at the timeline, we're going to be looking at a few more features, a little more in depth in part one, how to use some different animation clips, how to use audio clips, um, how to combine those together, how to use colliders with it and stuff like that. We're not actually going to look at any uh, Playmaker parts for this tutorial, but for you to go on tutorial uh, number three, you're going to need to know what happens to tutorial number two here, just so you have some more foundations. So let's take a look at what we're going to build. So I'm just going to hit play and then you can have a quick view. So I'm not a great animator here, but this you know didn't take me too long to animate and hopefully it's not too horrible. And we'll play. Okay, so let's have a look what's in our scene here. So I have Peanut the dog here, which is this is a low poly dog asset I got from the asset store comes with some uh, normal mechanism animations, not the legacy ones, but the current ones. I've added a uh, couple of boxes here, and I have a just a uh, particle system here. Again, this is a free particle system from the store. The thing is called Simple FX uh, Particles, and it's just some dust when the dog hits. So I've got a couple of sounds that play. So let's just um, we're going to throw all this into, oops, we'll throw all this into an empty and just turn it off and we can build this again from scratch so you can see how to do it. I'll create an empty, we'll just call this old, and grab all of these things. Actually, I should probably um, turn off this, all this stuff. Okay, so now it's all gone. We're just back to an empty scene. Now, I probably should actually grab Peanut back out here just so I can use him. And now, Peanut is just, again, uh, a model I got from the uh, store, so there's nothing uh, special about him or, you know, anything magical about this. What I have done is I've added an audio source to Peanut, so whatever the object you're going to animate, you might want to add an audio source if you're going to add some audio. Now I added a collider to Peanut here. He's got a box collider on him, as well as I've given him a rigid body and set this rigid body to kinematic. So this is so he can knock things over as he runs past them. Because I want him to you know, knock over a bunch of um, boxes here, whatever that may be. Now, as far as uh, Peanut the dog goes, let's just hit play and see what happens now that I haven't animated anything. And as you can see, he does nothing because he has no controller on him. So the timeline is going to act as our controller for Peanut the dog. So let's just do that first. Let's just block out our basic animations, and this is the way that we normally do it. So just like before, we're going to create an empty, we're going to I'm just going to call mine timeline. I'm going to create a new timeline for this and I'm just going to save it into timelines. Just call mine dog run. You can hear my own dog barking here. And so we've got a new timeline here, and automatically it's added timeline itself to the timeline. I don't need timeline itself here, so I'm going to delete this. And I can delete the animator off of timeline, actually, because I'm not going to animate it itself. I'm going to animate the dog here. So I'm just going to grab Peanut, and um, I should lock this timeline. Okay, and we're just going to quickly animate Peanut the dog here, and I'm not a great animator, but uh, hopefully I can fumble my way through this. So we're just going to grab Peanut and drop him on the timeline. 
and then we're going to choose animation track. So this will open up a new track, animation track for peanuts, and I'm going to click on him so I can see him in the inspector. And what I'm going to do is just rotate him around just a little bit here so he's facing the right direction for me. And I'm going to hit record. I'm going to add a keyframe just for the uh, position and the rotation. I'm going to drag him forward. He's going to come to there. So did that wrong. Let's just uh, jump to about 90 seconds and then drag him where I want him to be. We're going to have him take a little uh, detour here, so around, uh, I don't know, like something like 140 seconds, I want him to be, you know, maybe over here a little bit, and uh, we're just going to rotate him a little bit more. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that's about good for me. And then maybe once he's there, and add one more keyframe here, and we'll just rotate him back, looking back towards me. So good, that works for me, so I'm going to turn off the recording. The next thing I want to do is add the animations to it. So right now, I, you know, I've am animated the uh, positions, but not the animation of the actual dog itself. So to do that, I'm going to add another track, also called Animation, grab Peanuts again, and just drag his animator component onto it. So once I have this track, I can right click on the track and choose add from animation clip. And I know these are all dogs, so I'm going to type dog. And I'm going to use this dog run. So again, these are just normal animations that you would use in Mechum or Mechanim. And I want him to run until here where he stops. So I'm just going to drag it out. Oopsie. I just drag it out until it gets there. And you can see it says uh, the name of the animation that says like L1, L2, L3. So L is loop, so it's looping once, looping twice, looping three times. So if your animation's not looping, just open it up in the animation editor and make sure you click loop. Let's just drag this out. So here he's jumping, 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 running, and he's gonna stop there as he turns to look at me. So you can right click on this and then choose speed and change the speed, double speed has to to reset speed. But if you double click on it and you have it open the inspector, you can also set the speed multiplier here. So I'm going to set to uh, 1.5. I think that's going to look uh, better for me as you can see it's shortened. So we'll just grab and drag that out again because it's going to loop a few more times. So I think that fits sort of better with what I'm going on, what I've got going on. So you can see sort of floats weird. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is just add a, a jump animation here. So I'll add another from clip, type in dog, and say dog jump. Now we can just blend these animations together just by dragging them on top of each other like any uh, linear visual editor here, which is great. So you can see how smoothly that goes together. So I'll have them jump once. Let's duplicate this, control D and have them jump twice, once, twice, and then I'm just going to have him idle. So we'll add, actually I'm going to add a bark, forgot about that, dog bark, we'll just have a uh, single bark there, and then, and then I'll have him idle. So, of course, you can use whatever animations you have, whatever you want to do here. Let's play this through. Awesome, so it looks pretty good for just uh, doing this over a few minutes. Of course, we could clean this up and be a little more tight with our keyframes and stuff like that. Um, for Pina, I, I have my root animation off. I'm not sure how much of a difference this will make if I have it on. So it doesn't look too different for me, but you can try with or without root animation. Supposedly timeline supports both. Let's just save this. The next thing I'm going to do is add an audio track, and for that to work, you're going to need an audio source component, and I've added an audio source component here to Peanuts because I want the sound to come from Peanut. So just any old audio source, and I haven't changed any defaults here. So I'm going to add a new track here called Audio Track and then click on Peanut again and drag the audio source onto it so it knows which audio source I want to use. 
And again, I can right click on it and choose add from audio clip. And I have a dog run sound that I'm going to use here and loop that during his run. Then I have another audio clip for jump, which is a, a boing sound. And we're going to use this one twice. So those are pretty long. I'm not sure how this is going to actually sound. I didn't really uh, space it out greatly here. Then we're going to have a dog bark. And this is a really long audio clip. It's got lots of the dog barking, barking repeatedly, so I'm just going to shrink that down. So this probably won't match um, perfectly, but there it is. So as you notice when we scrub through, there is no sound here for just to scrub through. You're only going to get the sound if you um, play. How do we get this back? There we go. Okay, so let's just save this and play and then see how that goes. So not too bad. The, uh, let's do one more time. Seemed like the dog audio didn't play right away. But I think it's just a matter of this uh, compiling here. So that's close enough for the tutorial here. The next thing I want to do is just throw all these into a group. Once you start getting a whole bunch of tracks, you may get confused about them. So we have one called the uh, track group, and I can just call this dog. And you can grab all these tracks, and just like game objects, you can drag them in, and we can manage it this way. Now the next thing I want to do is actually add a particle effect so when my dog arrives we're going to have some sort of like dirt or dust show up. And I'm going to show you how to use another kind of track here called the activation track. And the activation track does sort of what it sounds like. It activates a game object for a certain duration. So in this case I want um, the particle effect just to be active during this specific duration of him jumping, jumping, and then it can end there. So I've got a particle effect in my project here already. I'm just going to search it out. Uh, I think it's called dust something. We'll try this dust FX one. And I'm going to move it over to where the dog is. And you can see there's a little bit of dust that shows up. So we'll just get it to the right place about there. And next we're going to go back to the timeline, grab this dust particle and just drop it as a game object. And as you can see it's going to turn off on the screen automatically. As we get to this particular spot it will turn itself back on, reactivate, and then disable again. Now the particle effects won't show when I'm scrubbing through, but um, they will play during the actual play. Now one thing about particle effects is sometimes they take a little bit of time to start working, and in this particle effect it's really slow to start sort of like steam or something. And so what I'm going to do is click the pre-warm here, and what it's going to do is sort of what it sounds like, it pre-warms the particle effect so when it turns on it's already in uh, full force. So this is good for me because it will take so long for this to uh, start working when I activate it that by the time the dogs jumped a few times, uh, you know, it, there won't have been any particle effect yet. So if we pre-warm this, this can solve this problem. Let's save this and click play. And you can now see the particle effect behind him during that. So those are the major parts of this. Um, we've got a uh, audio track, we've got an animation of the actual position, we've got animations of the uh, mechanism type basically, even though it's not using mechanism, and we know how to turn on and off specifically uh, 
particle effects or especially particle effects for animations. Now, I guess one more thing we're going to add here is for him to be able to knock over a bunch of items on the way. And that's pretty easy to do. Um, so if we look at Peanut the Dog already, he's got a box collider on him. And let's make sure he has a rigid body, which he does. And I've got this set to kinematic because I don't want any actual gravity applied to him. Next thing I'm going to do is just add a 3D object into the scene. I'm going to use a, a cube. Let's make this a bit smaller. And I'm just going to apply some um, random material here to this to make it easier to see. There we go. So it's also got a box glider. We're going to add a rigid body to this. We're going to make this rigid body nice and light. And we want gravity to apply to this one because he's going to knock it over and we, you know, we want them to act natural, so to speak. So we'll uh, duplicate this up and add a couple of these. So you might want to be more specific than me here, more careful, but this is going to do it for me. We'll get lots of tall ones there. So we'll just grab them all together at once, duplicate it, and pull another stack over. One more stack, if we can squish it in there. Hopefully we're not touching anything else. Okay, so let's hit play and see what happens here. And there you see he will smash through all of these cubes. So it's really great. We can use these animations not only to um, affect the actual animation itself, but it can actually affect things in the, the game itself. So I think that's it for this tutorial. We've covered pretty much everything I want to cover. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about uh, triggering scripts specifically from Playmaker and how we can tie this into Playmaker a little bit more. But I believe we've pretty much covered almost all the things here. And uh, yeah, so let's go to the next tutorial after this and talk a little bit more about Playmaker.